Hello everyone. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani, a lecturer in management accounting. Welcome to lesson four. Now, lesson four of marginal and absorption costing topic focuses on the CVP. Now, we are going to look at some few questions concerning the single product under the certainty or basic model of CVP and understand the formulas that I had given in lesson three. Now, the first question uh, reads that the following data relates to XYZ Limited, which produces and sells a single product. We have selling price per unit, 250 shillings, less cost, direct material per unit, shillings 40, direct labor per unit, shillings 60, variable overhead per unit, shillings 50, uh, fixed cost per unit, shillings 50, and therefore total cost per unit, shillings 200, net profit, shillings 50. Fixed costs are based on the normal output of 10,000 units. Required. Number A, determine the break-even point in units and in value. Two, Determine the margin of safety and percentage margin of safety. C. Determine the profit arising from sales of 8,000 units. D. Determine the profit arising from sales revenue of shilling 6 million. E, determine the sales required in units and value to yield a profit of shillings 500,000. And F, what should be the selling price so as to earn the profit for shillings, the profit above, if 8,000 units are sold. End of question. Now, this question has given us the price per unit, the cost per unit, and therefore we have the requirements. Now, the first thing to note is that uh, the fixed cost, we normally say it is a total fixed cost, not per unit. So we have been given per unit and we have been given the basis. The basis is 10,000 units. So we are going to actually determine the fixed cost with, res with respect to 10,000 units. So our requirement in part A is the break-even point in units and uh, in uh, value. So we're going to have here number A, Roman 1. We can have uh, BEP in units and BEP which is XB is given as F divided by CM the formula is F divided by CM we can say where F is actually a shillings 50 per unit multiplied by 10,000 units so this is going to be shillings 50 multiplied by 10,000 units. This is going to be shillings uh, 500,000. Then CM we know is CM is price minus variable cost where the price is given as shillings 250. The variable cost is given as a summation of material, labor, and variable overheads which is 40 plus 60 plus 50. This is giving us shillings. This is uh, 250 minus, or you can have it here. This is 250 minus, this is 150, and therefore this shillings 100. So we do have the CM, the contribution margin is shillings 100. So we can have it that uh, therefore the break-even point in units as fixed cost of 500,000 Divide by 
shilling, uh, shillings 100. This one will give us 5,000 units. So it will give us 5,000 units. Now, alternatively, alternatively, we can use the profit approach. This is the formula, but you can use the profit approach where we say that um, profit, which is pi, is given by P minus V. Then you have uh, X minus F. So we can have that, um, we can have where, when you have told the break-even point, so of course we know price is um, 250, the variable cost is 200, 150, sorry. The fixed cost is 500,000 that you have calculated. The profit is zero because it's a break-even point. So the units are the question mark. Units are the question mark. So if you are to substitute using this formula, we'll have it this way. Therefore, so pi equals to 250 minus 150, then you have units minus 500,000. This will give us pi equals to 100x minus 500. And now because we have said that um, uh, profit is zero at break-even point, so we said that uh, therefore 100x minus 500,000, the answer shall be zero at break-even point. So we have it now as um, x is 500,000 when you transfer the other side, divide by 100. And this is what we have as 1,000 units. So you have the same requirements or the same uh, solution, sorry. That we are using the formula for break-even point, we get 5,000 units. And using the profit approach, we get the same 5,000 units. So any of the two would, should be applicable. Then we do have... Um, the Roman 2, Roman 2 break even point in shillings. This is the value in shillings. So we still have the formula that RB is divided by CMR. The formula is F divided by CMR. So where CMR we know is just taking 1 minus P over 1 minus V over P. And this one is going to be 1 minus. The variable cost is actually uh, 150, while the price is 250. So this is going to give us a variable cost ratio of this amount. So it's like saying 100 over 250, because when you subtract, so 1 divided by 150 divided by 250, cost is 0 0.6, and that one is the cost ratio. Then we less from 1, then this will give us 0 0.4. So this is 0 0.4. So therefore, the revenue break-even shall be shillings 500,000, the fixed cost. You divide by 0 0.4. This is going to give us shillings. So 500,000 divided by 0 0.4, this is going to give us shillings. 1,250,000. Not. Uh, we can also say here that uh, alternatively, so alternatively, alternatively, if we have R, so this one you can say recall, eh? so recall that R equals to Px, recall that Px. Now if we remember this, then if I want the revenue for break-even point, then I also require the units of break-even. Therefore, revenue break-even should be price, then X break-even. And because you have the price per unit, and you have the units break-even here, 5,000, you get uh, the revenue break-even. So you can say that um, RB should be, uh, this is 100, no, price is 250 shillings, you multiply the units, which is 5,000. So this one, when you multiply 250 times um, 5,000, this should give you shillings 1,250,000. That is uh, the alternative. Or even another one. 
if we can still use the profit approach, the way I've, you, I've shown you profit approach, giving this form, uh, this uh, solution, we can still use the profit approach, but this time it's a profit approach uh, given the revenue. So you can have this way, uh, or pi is cmr dot r minus f. Pi equals to cmr dot r minus f is the profit that I gave for revenue. But the one you have done there, P minus V, then X minus F is the normal profit, but for units. So we do have the CMR is 0 0.4. So we can have here that uh, pi equals to 0 0.4 R minus 500,000, the fixed cost we know. So with this formula now, we know that at break-even point, profit is zero. So we can say that uh, therefore, 0 R minus 500,000, the answer should be zero because it's at break-even point. At break-even point, profit is zero. So this will be give us R equals to 500,000. You divide by 0 0.4, which is what we had here. Uh, this is 500 divided by 0 0.4. So finally, our answer. So R is going to be shillings 1,250,000. You see now there are several ways you can be able to answer this question and you are able to get the solution. So I've shown you the profit, uh, the f exact formula for break-even point, an alternative one, the exact formula for break-even point and some alternative ones. That is uh, to show that um, this area is flexible. Uh, you just need to look at the uh, one which is somehow friendly to you. Then you are asked, the next requirement, you are asked uh, to determine the profits arising from sales of 8,000 units. Now, before that, you are asked the margin of safety. So let's have the margin of safety. So this is part B. Part B, Roman 1, is margin of safety. Now, we know that margin of safety is given as MOS, of course, in units, is given as actual sales minus break-even. So if we were to use the current uh, expected sales, we can have it here as 10,000 units. We minus That is break-even point, 5,000. So this is going to give us 5,000 units. This is the margin of safety. Should we go with the 10,000, then, of course, we are operating at a safe area because we the break even point is five and you're operating at 10 or we expect to operate at 10. There's a margin of safety of 5,000 in units. Then uh, let's say Roman two, you are asked the percentage MOS. So this one, of course, we say that is where we take the, the MOS in units divided by uh, A. So this divided by the actual, so times 100. So this means you take the 5,000, the, the margin of safety, you divide by the actual. In our case, the actual is this expected of 10,000. You multiply by 100. And this is going to give us 5 divided by 10 times 100. This is give us 50%. Meaning, we are operating at 50% away from the point that is. That is what we, we, we mean by that. So 50% is our MOS uh, in percentage. Then in part C, you were asked the when you operate at 8,000 units. So at 8,000 units. So we can have here that um, have, uh, at 8,000 So this one is profit at so profit at 8,000. So we know the profit is given as pi is given us. So we do have it here. I've shown you the profit. Uh, the so it is 100x minus 500,000 that now we require to substitute. We do have a formula and a function for profit, which is a function of units, that if you just put the units here, we should get the profit. And that's why if we have here that uh, this is pi equals to 100 in bracket 8,000, then minus 500,000. This is going to give us like 800 minus 5. This is going to be shillings 300,000. 
So currently, if we are able to sell five, uh, 300,000, and we are able to sell 8,000, sorry, then you can make a profit of 300,000. Now, note something, note something. The fixed cost, which uh, we did with respect to, fixed cost we did with respect to 10,000 units. This is why the cost is called fixed. It does not change with the level of production. As much as we are now looking at 8,000 units, the cost does not change with that 8,000. It's going to still stick to the 10,000. That's something to note. The variable and the selling price are changing, and that's why they are all variables. So that's something to note about it. That's now the profit at 8,000 uh, units. <laughs>